This video is not directly a tutorial. What I want is to make an introduction for a tutorial series which handles the topics rigging, animation and exporting in FBX in general for beginner and for FBX exporting issues and specific file size optimization. 3D modeling and texturing is one part of CG art, but rigging and animation is another big thing which I constantly avoid to learn. Very important is as well to know what you are planning to do with the rig and the animation. Rigging just for rendering is different than a rig for game engine which you need to export. In this series focusing on exporting the created rig and animation. In the last couple of weeks I tried to gain all the necessary information and skills in Blender to get a 3D character with textures, a rig and all of its animated actions or NLA stripes into a FBX with a file size limit of 3.5 MB. The file size was especially important for the Spark AR software, which is creating augmented reality filters. I want to talk about all I have to learn and consider during the project and I want to share my path, experience and opinion with you. I'm just a simple man who is doing some basic stuff in Blender, but to be honest, rigging is or was really confusing for me. I'm not a pro, I just try to collect all the information and prepare it for this video. If I'm somewhere wrong, feel free to discuss this in the comments below. But don't blame me for a lack of knowledge, because I know that I'm not an expert. This should be a place of help, support and I try to share and collect this knowledge here for everybody. So in this video I will give you a summary for my experience with rigging, animation and the export as a beginner and this is a decent overview of my next videos which will handle those topics in detail. This video series is for all who doesn't have any experience with rigging and animation so far and want to learn. It should be a guidance. I can only give you the basic advices and links. So after this introduction to my new series I want to give you a summary of my experience for learning rigging, animation and exporting and file optimization. About 10 years ago I made a course for rigging in Autodesk Maya. Rigging confused me in the past and it still confuses me in the present. I was never good at programming, doing complex settings and technical stuff. Rigging is for me something like this. FK, IK, constraints, parenting, overlapping and convoluted bones hierarchies. This is something which is overwhelming for me. I'm not sure if I would be able to learn this all by my own, maybe after some time. Luckily Blender has an add-on which auto generate a rig for you by giving you prepared models. This add-on is called Rigifier and just need to be enabled in the preference window. I'm convinced that everybody need to understand the mechanism and setup for a rig even though Rigify takes over a lot of work for their functionality. I found a very good YouTube channel for learning rigging with Rigify. CG Dive gives you a perfect introduction and explains the functionality slowly step by step. The tutorials are very good for beginners and covers the basic for rigging on his YouTube channel. If you really want to dive into the mechanism and the single explanation of the settings, then I would advise you to check out his Gumroot course, which contains a useful tips, tricks and information how to rig anything with Rigify in detail. You find the link to this course in the video description below. Really, check out this course when you want to learn how to rig. You need to work through all the videos, it is a hard job I know. But this is what I did and what I would advise you to do as well. Todor is the person behind CG Dive. He really bothered about their beginner tutorial and explains a lot which I didn't find anywhere else. It happened that something was hard to follow because sometimes he made a step or returns to a topic in the later part of his video, but I think that he has the most current and comprehensive beginner tutorial for Rigify and he can be proud of this. What I also learned from Todor is that the Rigify rig is not optimized for exporting to an external software like game engines or for example Spark RR. I really got useful information on his channel to solve this as well. Again, I just can advise you to check out his channel and his Gumroad course. Take your time to learn, take notes and learn how to handle Rigify. It's not that hard. I will be never able to create tutorials about rigging like him. This channel is gold.
Basically, it is easier to start with 2D animating a ball, learn to understand squash and stretch, rotation loops and so on. But if you want to dive into 3D animating immediately, then I would recommend to use references. Study every frame and movement of the body. Focus on specific parts of the body and set keyframes for the key poses. Make your own reference videos and study how your body behaves in which movement. Animating a realistic movement is pretty tough and hard for beginner. I'm pretty sure that I made everything wrong and that an experienced artist would do stuff differently than me. So I will talk only about the setting and my setup before I care about the single keyframes. One of the most outstanding supporting elements which helped me for animating and handling all the workspace panels in the same time is my new widescreen. It is unbelievably enjoyable and I find enough space for each panel. I was able to work with 5120 to 1440 pixel screen space and I can't imagine the work again with an ordinary screen of 1920 to 1080 pixels or even smaller on a laptop. For sure it is possible, but then everything is so tiny. YouTube will never cover this experience with this video footage here. The main question behind the topic is, what exactly influence file size? The main parameters are 3D geometry, texture size, if it is necessary for the FBX, amount of bones for the rig, number of animation and probably amount of keyframes, the settings for an FBX, and what I learned today, in some cases the settings for your NLA stripes. I hardly found information about FBX optimization on YouTube and the internet. You will always find specific settings which you should enable or disable but you will not get information how this will influence your file size. Exporting and working FBX with all its content was really one of the hardest parts. Not because it is hard to learn, no. It was hard to get all the specific settings and information which are necessary for file size. No one is talking about file size. One setting can double the file size result. This is funny, but I will show you what you need to do. I hope my following videos will guide you through the creation process and prepare you where you will find what. I'm very excited for this tutorial series and I hope I will be able to help you getting started with rigging, animation and FBX export. That's all so far. Thank you very much for watching. It would be very nice to give this video a like and or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more game dev videos. Cheers!